Hello everyone, welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 23. Today is January 16 and happy Thursday. Please remember that the recording of this call will be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel as usual. And also please remember, remember to be asking your questions so we can have a good Q&A at the end of this call. Um, super happy and pumped today to be here been having a lot of uh, conversations with the community lately, so it seems we're doing a lot of things right. And now I'll pass it on to uh, Luca from the engineering team. Thank you, Angie. Hi, everybody. Luca from Milano. Thank you for following us as usual, as Angie was also remarking. So this is a, another week of progress on uh, multiple areas, and in particular, activities like the uh, main chain block explorer update and sphere by horizon fixes are moving on. Specifically speaking about Sphere by Horizon, after having applied a fix for the performance issue and a graphical UX component for the final user to have indication of the time required to update the wallet addresses, we have also added a timestamp to track how much time does it take uh, for the method to refresh data from blockchain to execute. Uh, and we did it on both master version and our build so that the team testing the wallet can do comparisons. Uh, the wallet modifications are being tested right now and maybe Gustavo will talk about that. And the goal would be to release a, a, a first version towards the end of January to have the community being uh, uh, able to try it and give immediate feedback. And later near the deprecation date on the 25th of February, releasing another version with the compatibility of the new Zendi and potential uh, new changes. So for what regards deprecation, uh, I just anticipated the topic. We will have a new Zendi software deprecation on the 25th of February. This means, as usual, that our current software will stop working. And uh, that's because we will release a new version of Zen named uh, 2020, 2020 that will replace it. All exchanges, mining pools, node operators, and full node wallet users will have to upgrade to Zen 2020 prior the 25th of February. For this reason, uh, with a joint effort between the PM team and the marketing team, we are drafting communications to be used on our blog, on our social media channels, and also for our communications with all partners and exchanges. Uh, just like last time, we'll, uh, we will give a uh, one month of notice to let everybody upgrade in time. And it will be a mandatory software upgrade uh, with a focus uh, on maintenance. Now, Alberto, if you uh, would like to proceed with the sidechain specific updates, this week I recovered my voice. And uh, that's why, Rosario, <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking like on a podcast. But Alberto lost it. So let's see if he can talk. Alberto? Yes, Luca, let's try. Okay, um, on the sidechain project, uh, we continued with the consensus and stake delegation implementation. And in particular, uh, we're uh, currently doing the unit tests for the consensus changes in history. And this activity uh, will uh, continue uh, also uh, during the next days. Moreover, uh, we're doing changes uh, in transaction to support uh, these uh, forger stakes creation and spending. So what does this mean? This means that uh, to be um, eligible as a forger, I will have to, let me say, lock some coins and these uh, require uh, the modifications in the, in the transaction to support such uh, spending regular coins and create this kind of uh, UTXOs that are con be considered for uh, being eligible uh, as a forger. And after these tasks, uh, we are going to proceed with the state and wallet update for always for consensus. Okay, uh, speaking about main chain um, <clears throat> and uh, in particular the changes uh, required by the session model, um, the first review uh, uh, started last week and um, we agreed on some changes in order to improve the implementation and uh, currently uh, these changes are in progress too. And uh, lastly, about the new paper, 
Um, as mentioned last week, um, the first review round at IHK was complete and was positive. And this week, uh, a second technical uh, second round is, is, is ongoing. And we expect uh, that this round would be the final one uh, before publication. So uh, I think that really, really, really soon we will have everything published. And it's everything. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto, for the sidechain updates. And last but not the least, uh, today I started shooting uh, videos in the Milan office involving some of the engineers from the team. The goal is to produce a vlog series, so I'll be collaborating with the marketing department for this project. And uh, the first video will be out soon. We hope you enjoy. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca and Alberto. Uh, OK, now we have the updates from infrastructure with Chronic. Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, so I'm currently focusing on uh, Zen CI/CD, um, and the end goal really is to to have um, builds for every auto uh, operating system uh, verifiably built on a publicly accessible uh, CI/CD system and uh, test it there as well, and then uh, publish to our GitHub. And um, this process will, will happen in multiple stages. So we're going to add features uh, over time. And uh, the, the first uh, iteration will only build the Linux uh, binaries for now and uh, test them. And uh, this is really a, a pretty big project um, uh, in terms of setting up everything, setting up build infrastructure uh, dynamically. And um, a long-term goal will also be to, to have reproducible builds uh, so that uh, anybody can uh, uh, replicate the, the build infrastructure locally or at least parts of them and uh, build ZND and verify that uh, it's uh, the same as the one published in the latest release. And um, for the next Zen, ZND release, uh, we, we want to have at least uh, a system running that uh, we can take... Uh, part of the binaries uh, and publish them automatically. And for updates of the node tracking system, I'm passing on to Alan. Thanks, Kronik. Um, we got a few things. Last week, there were some outages at a ISP that some node trackers were hosted. And there were some failovers that exposed a, um, an issue that we had with orphan nodes being created on the tracking servers. So we put together a quick update, um, hot fix, and deployed that last weekend to fix that. And everything looks like it's uh, working properly now. We also have, um, as we've mentioned before, recently passed over 30,000 um, secure nodes and yesterday was the first earning period that actually we had over 30,000 um, eligible nodes get paid because there's always a small percentage that aren't eligible for one reason or another such as uh, maybe they moved their stake or they had technical difficulties but that was another milestone. And there also seems to be an uptick in new secure nodes. Usually there's uh, about maybe 100, 130 uh, new nodes a day. And in the last 30 day period, we've hit 199. So it seems like we've got a, a good uptick in the amount of secure nodes that are being created. And with that, I'll send it back to you, Angie. Thank you, Kronik and Alan. OK, now we have the updates from the help desk with Spencer. Happy Thursday, everyone. It's uh, going to be a short report today. If you look in the text channel, you'll see the weekly insider service desk uh, snapshot indicating the top tickets or the top categories for tickets on the service desk. As usual, primarily um, dominated by the faucet at almost 84%, uh, few sphere by horizon, and some inquiries about the social media uh, drawing. Uh, one thing to note about the more detailed um, information is that our approval rating has climbed uh, to 4.3 out of a possible five. 
And that's the update from the service desk this morning. Thank you, Spencer. Now we have uh, Gustavo from UX. Hey, everyone. I'll also keep it short on my side. So on the Sphere desktop testing, uh, as Luca mentioned, we'll be conducting benchmark tests. And uh, the big test this week, it has been a new faucet feature that we've been going, been working on. And uh, it's going live tomorrow. We'll have Jonathan to provide us some additional details. So stay tuned. And it's everything. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Gustavo. Now we have uh, Rowan from the business development side. Hello, everyone. Uh, no real update from me this week. Uh, the past past days have basically been spent planning internally to try and make sure that we know exactly what we're going after uh, in the rest of the year. Myself and the BD team just finished our, our weekly call, uh, excited about the targets we've put in place. We know exactly what we need to do, and now it's just time to execute. Uh, unfortunately, I've been out of office for the past few days, so no real updates beyond that, but anybody else from BD that wants to jump in and provide an update, please feel free to do so. Hello everyone, Juan speaking from Georgia. So my only public update is that I will be in uh, UK, in London, at the BET show in th throughout, like from uh, January 22nd to January 25th, which is uh, a mainly an educational uh, technical conference and uh, show. But uh, I have found out that there are some uh, blockchain related stuff and I also got a sponsorship for my uh, travel there, so it's essentially a free opportunity for us. And I will be meeting Mac there, and uh, if anyone else uh, from uh, our community or team will be there during those days, I will be happy to meet. That's all from me. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, guys. Um, I have to say, I see a lot of new members here, so that's awesome. Let's continue uh, with the marketing updates uh, with Lucy. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, new uh, uh, listeners to this uh, uh, this call. So, a uh, little updates from social me uh, for social media. Uh, so, we have reached a new milestone on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube subscribers are over ten thousand now, and uh, the engagement has increased a lot as well, and it's still increasing. Uh, so, we have an, an ongoing uh, giveaway of some very very special sidechain T-shirt. So they're exclusive design. They're not available to buy on our store. So uh, in order to get the cool T-shirt, uh, all you need to do just you just need to uh, watch a video on our YouTube channel and then answer some questions, right? And we posted uh, the uh, video to watch and the question last Friday. Uh, a lot of people participated. Uh, we will announce the winner tomorrow, uh, and at the same time, we will also release the next video to watch along with the question. Uh, so if you missed the last giveaway or didn't win, uh, don't be disappointed. You know, just make sure that you follow us on social media and participate in the next one. Uh, besides the YouTube uh, subscription milestone, uh, our Twitter follower is also about to reach a new milestone. So we are approaching 50,000 followers on Twitter very, very soon. Uh, you know, definitely something something worth to, uh, to celebrate when we get to that point. Uh, so to celebrate, uh, you know, but mainly to welcome all the new people recently joined our community, we will be hosting another giveaway. So this time, the winners will will receive a mystery box full of Horizon goodies. So again, uh, be sure that you pay attention to our social media feeds uh, because you definitely don't want to miss miss out. You know, on this one. And then, uh, content wise, we are working on a few uh, uh, video projects. You know, one of which. Uh, um, uh, Luca just mentioned, uh, and then uh, we are going to we will be going to releasing them very very soon, uh, and then they're very interesting content and very helpful as well. So uh, pay attention to uh, to our social media feeds again, uh, and then something about uh, events. So our community manager in China, Guan, attended uh, a big uh, uh, event last last Saturday, and then it was you know a very big, uh, very good success. Um, he spoke at the event, and uh, uh, something worth to mention that the place where he went actually had a SARS virus, SARS-like virus outbreak, uh, and a lot of major events were actually canceled during that time. Uh, but the event, uh, the blockchain event that that he went, uh, had still had a really good turnout. A lot of people showed up, and uh, 
uh, and then you know that just shows that people are very very excited about you know the blockchain technology and then all the people who attended were uh, um, just you know die hard a crypto a blockchain enthusiast and also wanted to take this opportunity to uh, uh, to thank uh, Guan uh, to to go there and then uh, uh, represent Horizon even under such a dangerous situation I would say. Um, and uh, just like Vano mentioned, he will be attending the event in London, in the UK. Uh, and uh, uh, it's one of the largest uh, conferences on the topic of uh, technology education. Uh, just another reminder that uh, Vano uh, is open for in-person interviews or chats. So if you're around the area or would like to meet our team member Vano, uh, who's just really, really great, very pleasant to, uh, to, to be around, you know, please reach out to us. Uh, also, Ralph is uh, re uh, is presenting at a uh, uh, an online conference called Crypto 2020, and uh, they have free tickets available online until January the 23rd. Uh, usually, the the regular price is pretty expensive. I think it's almost two hundred dollars. So uh, it's a really good opportunity if you if you want to grab a free ticket and uh, um, attend the conference online. Uh, and then final, finally, a uh, reminder for the upcoming live stream, uh, 20, January the 29th, uh, which is the last Wednesday of this month. Uh, we'll be going through an overview of 2019 and then what, you know, uh, what we will be doing, uh, what we will be doing 2020. So uh, make sure that you mark that on your calendar. That's it from me. Thank you. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes, very clearly. Okay, cool. It looks like Guan is giving Thredo a run for his money for top Zen evangelist. It's like we have some competition going on. I like that. So uh, from the growth side, um, well, first of all, Barry Silbert had a really awesome tweet about Horizon today. So he said, Zen just scored a coveted one rating by the Crypto Rating Council. So I would ask our community to go and either like or retweet the tweet and you know sh show Barry uh, your support for for this project. Um, also a, a very exciting new feature for the faucet is coming out so it's something we've been talking about for a while. Uh, the goal of this feature again is to make sure that we're really rewarding people who want to learn more about Zen and the ecosystem and want to be a part of the ecosystem rather than uh, people who are just trying to, you know, kind of scam the faucet. So the feature is you now have the option to authenticate your profile uh, within the app, um, within the faucet dashboard. And then the more authentications you have, the more rewards you get. So, for example, if you're Lucy and you, you log in and, and uh, then you authenticate your Twitter, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, and eventually your Gmail and your Instagram, your rewards will skyrocket for the faucet. However, on the contrary, if you do not authenticate, your rewards will not be uh, as high. So that way, uh, we're really promoting people who are real, authentic, and interested in the project. So you should see that live um, by Monday. Uh, hopefully it'll get released tomorrow, but if not, um, definitely by Monday. And the exciting thing about this is now that we have authentications, we're going to also expand our logins. So this is in the next two to three weeks. So you will no longer only require a Gmail to log in. You'll also be able to log in with your, you know, your Twitter, your Facebook, etc. So um, the Gmail was really a solution to prevent spam and bots. But now I really think that our community will continue to 3x, 4x, 5x by allowing people who do not have Gmail addresses who are legitimate Zen fans to also use the faucet. And that's it for me. Thank you. Wow, I, I see uh, this must be working because I see a lot of retweets on Barry's tweet after I mentioned that. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jonathan and Lucy. Now we have Rosario with Product and Engineering. Hi guys, Rosaria here. So I've mentioned Roadmap a few times uh, during this these calls. So I have inputs from Growth Academy and HDE, and we're looking forward to sharing the, the final roadmap with the rest of the team. So uh, keep that in, in mind in the future. So we are gearing up to perform a code audit on Zendee. That's our code that is in 
uh, currently in production. And we'll be performing code audits as part of our standard process, especially important as we have a major deliverable uh, coming soon with the main chain uh, changes that are required for the sidechain SDK. And uh, our very own uh, Alberto Benidiamo Albene will be our technical point of contact for the code audit. I'm also happy to announce that we've started an effort to hire two new de developers to support our interim product team, and they'll be co-located with our, our engineering shop to take advantage of, of management facility and processes that we have there. That is it for now. Thank you, guys. Happy Thursday. Thank you, Rosario. Uh, Rolf, would you like to add any updates or comments? Yeah, thanks, Angie. Um, we've been rising up in the coin market cap rankings, which is rewarding. And I think that we're doing well as a project overall uh, across all different aspects of it. As that happens, based on past experience, I think everybody on the team is going to find more people reaching out to us, uh, trying to sell things, trying to provide things, trying to show why the services that they offer are essential to our continued to success. And, and I want to tell everybody, what we've done so far is what's brought us to where we are now, and that's what's going to keep us going. So the teamwork, the hard work, the focus on Horizon, um, staying you know, clear on what our goals are and what our deliverables and actions, that's going to be the most important thing. So be careful in having other people suck up your time and get you to work their agenda. Really, the most important thing you can do is, is keep doing what you're doing. And if something sounds good, something sounds uh, like it, it's maybe something we should look at and spend time on, talk to somebody else on the team. Don't make any uh, commitments. And um, if it turns out not to be something, just move on and, and focus on what you're doing. So um, just a little bit of perspective from the last run up. Thanks. Thank you, Rolf. And now we have Rob for the final part. Thank you, Angie, and thank you everyone for the wonderful Weekly Insider so far. Uh, so I was trying to think, what are the big messages that I want to get across to the community today? Uh, some of this, uh, I apologize to some of the team members here, will be a little repetitive because uh, I said this earlier in the week to some of us. Um, but uh, I'm going to just go into it anyway because there's so much that I think we have to communicate to the community and just really all get on the same page and all get excited here. So the first thing is, is it just me or can everyone else feel the buzz of energy that's going around the project lately? I mean, just even trying to keep up on this weekly insider text chat channel today is, is kind of insane, but it's so much fun. And I have to say, this is uh, awesome to see. So let's keep it going. Um, something that was mentioned now, uh, Jonathan mentioned it on the Crypto Rating Council. This was the tweet that Barry Silbert made earlier today, uh, announcing our score. Basically, they, they rated us a one of five. And this is uh, basically a rating of how close to uh, a security does our project look. Uh, and basically, a one gives us the highest possible rating. And it's a very, like, like Barry said in the tweet, a very coveted rating because we're, we're on par with Bitcoin in terms of our very low risk of, from a regulatory perspective in the US being classified as a security. And why is this important is because there are a whole bunch of uh, very high quality partners that we could potentially work with on a variety of different things, including uh, for, as an example, exchanges that, that might be interested in listing Zen and they don't want to work with projects that have any sampling, semblance of being classified as a security by the regulators. Uh, so uh, getting this rating for us is uh, extremely important because this puts us uh, in the running with other very high quality, very uh, well-respected projects in the industry. So a huge shout out here to Rowan and Dean for providing just a ton of information uh, to the lawyers uh, and teams that were reviewing Horizon. Uh, this was actually an ongoing process for some time and I'm really happy that it was announced officially now. Um, so great job, guys. Now, speaking of getting all grown up, uh, Rosario mentioned uh, implementing a process of third party audits for everything that we do is, is now our new commitment to driving um, you know, the highest quality standards we possibly can. So 
This project has evolved significantly from when we first launched it in 2017 uh, to where we are now. And on the engineering side, the quality of work that we do, the processes we have in place are second to none. And this is just a part of that evolution of now having other uh, software development companies and auditors come in and actually look at our code base from a professional and rigorous perspective and make sure that there's at least nothing obvious or nothing you know, as you dig into the weeds that um, would, would represent uh, either low quality standards or potential threats to the code, to the project. So really happy about that. And that also, uh, again, you can see the big theme here is as a project, we're trying to drive everything that we do towards the highest possible quality standards because we are growing up significantly and expect to see us in the top rankings for a variety of different categories going forward. <clears throat> so we are wrapping up our 2020 priorities. I've mentioned this last week. Uh, this is the week where we're wrapping it up internally and we will have a 2020 roadmap public for you guys next week. So our commitment is next weekly insider. Expect to see this 2020 roadmap released. It's going to be exciting. Um, really, really good progress for the project. And a, a, a fun or good anecdote here is that our Milan team is growing uh, so much to the point where we actually need new office space. Uh, so this is just an administrative thing, and now we're starting to explore other office space options. But it's just gratifying to see that, like I said, the quality of the engineering team that we have now in-house is just outstanding. And the fact that it has grown, despite, despite the fact that uh, Alberto and team have maintained the very highest standards possible for even the types of people we would take in-house, um, the fact that we have so many now that we have to look for new office space is just pretty cool. Um, Okay, so Rolf touched on this and, and I'll piggyback on it, but Zen has been rocking it in the market. And what I'll say is from a management perspective here, we don't manage the project to the price of Zen. Uh, that's just not something that, you know, of course it, it is a reality that we have to face basically because our budget comes in the treasury denominated in Zen and the, the economic resources that we have available to us to you know, plan things, to actually execute projects is a function of the price of Zen. Um, and, and I can say just from a high level, it's a bit of a vindication that the price has recovered out of the bear market. Um, you know, though again, we're not managing what we're doing to that. What we're focusing on is building a world-class team, organization, and healthy ecosystem community. That's ultimately what we're doing, and, and that's where our focus is. It's, it's just nice, though, to see the market you know, starting to support the project a bit. Uh, and one, one reason for that is the community may not realize this, but uh, a good chunk of our team has actually been working on reduced hours and reduced pay for some time now. Um, so things did look a little bit bleak, I have to say, during the, the worst of the worst times in the bear market, but we rallied together as a team, as a community, and people took you know, fairly significant personal sacrifices to continue supporting the project. Now, what I can say from my, my um, career that I've had thus far, I've never seen this in anything that I've ever done. You know, I've, I've come in through the military, through the corporate world, to startups, to plenty of other things in between, and I've never seen this type of commitment at a personal level from team members. Willing to sacrifice, but continue, continue working and, and maybe even uh, increasing their efforts to try to help us uh, as a project you know, overcome the, you know, the darker times. So my first priority, I can tell you from the organizational perspective is, uh, is on our people. And as resources permit, I'll, I'm gonna be looking to reinstate normal working hours and pay. Now this is something I've, you know, internally urged our team to be a, a little bit patient on because we want to be cautious and conservative with everything that we're doing. And, you know, uh, no surprise, we, we were running a bit in the red for, for too long. So we do have some some uh, you know uh, backlog of things that we need to clear before we are going to do new spending. But my top priority, as we do spend on new new things, will be on our people. Okay, so uh, again, Rolf touched on this. Why is the price going up? Well, let's be intellectually honest and say we have no idea. None of us do. Uh, but we have built extremely strong foundations as a project, and our fundamentals are through the roof. And this is what we manage the project to, is making sure that we, we have a very strong fundamental uh, organization and project and that we're doing things that make sense, uh, that we're always challenging ourselves, and that every single uh, aspect of our organization is outperforming uh, and constantly improving. So our community numbers are exploding. Our technology is 
you know, we're, we're delivering clearly uh, differentiated um, cutting edge technology to market. We've delivered an alpha in, in October. We're well on track for the beta this quarter. Uh, everything's looking good. Our marketing team is locking down our, our vision, our mission. Everything is uh, moving along very well. And we're going to keep doing what we're doing well and continuing to try to improve from an organizational perspective. Now, what I think we can do to keep the momentum going, and I'll keep this quick, uh, we need to keep delivering technology either on or ahead of schedule. I suspect we're going to be doing this ahead of schedule. We have to continue clarifying our vision mission and make the story of what we are resonate and make that go viral. Because the reality is what we're doing here is a movement, not a company. Uh, and this has to be pervasive in what we're doing. And I think we're honing in on a better and better vision, really refining what we've said all along, but making it uh, packaging this in a very clear way that actually touches people's emotions. I think you have to touch people at the emotional level or it's not gonna go viral. We have to continue our commitment to perfection, but temper this with, with not being afraid to try new things. So we have to have a culture of aggressive experimentation, which I think we do, but also be fanatical with improving things. So we can go to market with experiments quickly, uh, but we have to make sure that we do this in a responsible way and we're rapidly improving on everything. Um, we're gonna continue massively growing our community. The, the growth has been staggering and the engagement that we're seeing is, is absolutely uh, phenomenal. Uh, uh, we're gonna see much more of this as we go forward. We have to continue making Zen useful to people. One aspect that we're considering is experimenting on the merchant side with the a uh, set of incentive programs for can we onboard merchants, can we make it worthwhile, can we actually get people to use Zen in a commercial environment to make that sustainable. Um, so, and then ultimately, guys, we are all the first line, uh, basically the front line of this project, and we have to be fanatical evangelists, all of us. We have to lead by example, we have to always do the right thing, and we have to get Zen out there and make sure that when people look at the project, they see us, they see great examples of what we should be doing, what a crypto project should be doing. And, you know, just again, like I said, we, we can do nothing better than to lead by example. And so far, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed, so positively overwhelmed with what I'm seeing here in the community and with what I'm seeing as a team. So, guys, I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Um, let's open it up to any Minty questions that we may have. Yeah, we have quite a few. I can uh, hear the, uh, the excitement in the, in the questions. So the first question, hello, Horizon team, thanks for doing these calls. Uh, will Supernode operators be able to choose which side chains to host? If so, how will the mechanism work? Great question. So I, I, I know the answer, so I'll just say it quickly, because since we have a bunch, uh, the answer is yes, of course, uh, obviously. So the, the side chain system is being designed so that nodes will choose which side chains they, they they want to be a part of. So it's not that every single node is forced to be part of every single sidechain in the system. Um, it, it's actually the opposite. So we, we believe very much in individual choice, and that's going to be part of this. Thank you, Rob. The second question uh, is, what could be the cause of the recent massive bull run? We are one of the top performers for quite some time. That is totally insane. You know, I, the academic in me is uh, it says I have no idea other than if you do the right thing over and over consistently, uh, you deliver on your promises and you focus on building a world class organization. I, I, I think that that's ultimately the the bottom line for what's going on. But really, I have no idea. I have no idea what the, the approximate catalyst might be. But, you know, what we are doing is we're taking lessons from this, like we've been doing all along and constantly improving what we do and how we do things. Okay, the third question is, what privacy protocols do you use to provide a secure environment for users who redefine the blockchain industry's security and privacy standards? So this is a good one. Chronic, are you still on the line? Do you want to take a stab at this? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes. So the question is, what privacy protocols do you use to provide a secure environment for users who redefine the blockchain industry's security and privacy standards? I'll post the question here on the chat as well.
Well, um, first and foremost, uh, we use our ZK Snarks as our privacy protocol of choice on the blockchain. And uh, for anybody that really wants uh, privacy as much as possible, I can only suggest using Tor. Uh, we do actually run some nodes uh, on the Tor network. And uh, we have documentation in the Zen repository to use Tor uh, with Zen. And uh, this can be done so that you're essentially completely anonymous if you're only using shielded addresses and are only connecting with your node uh, over the Tor network. And um, there is currently no known technical way to uh, de-anonymize you if, uh, if you're using Tor and uh, Zen in combination. And with the shielded messaging and the messaging protocol, which is uh, integrated into our Sphere and uh, Swing wallets, you can also communicate securely. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chronic and Rob, and then those are the top three questions of the day. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Well, thank you all uh, for being here. I believe we will be posting the rest of the questions here in the chat channel so we can all answer uh, for those who want to, to answer the, the last questions. Thank you. Have a great day. See you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.